Hello everyone and welcome back! Now that we have everything in place, let's get started implementing our data table. We are simply going to start by displaying some data on the screen and then we will add further features like pagination, sorting and filtering. We're going to start by a table that contains all its data on the client side, which is the simplest case. So we're going to go here to our course component and we're going to add here a material table. This table will take a couple of properties. We are first going to add here a couple of CSS classes. We're going to be using the lessons table CSS class that is defined here at the level of the course component CSS file. And we can see that the lessons table class is here. So we're just giving the table some minimum height so that we can see something on the screen when the data shows up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our course component and we're going to add here the very typical material design drop shadow to this table. The size of the shadow is going to depend on the elevation of the plane where the material table is. So if we want a stronger shadow, we need to choose a higher elevation. The next thing that we need to define are the table columns. We are going to be defining each column in a ng container element. The ng container element will not get rendered to the screen, but it provides a template element onto which we can apply directives, such as, for example, the material colon definition directive that we are going to be applying here, and we are going to use it to define to which column of the table this container is associated with. In our case, this first column is going to be the sequential number column. We're going to have a couple more columns. So the second column of our table is going to be the description of the lesson. And the third column is going to be the duration. Now that we have the three columns in place, let's have a look to see what we are going to define for each column. We're going to be defining what the header of the column is going to look like and we're going to define also what a given cell of the column will look like, a cell with data. So let's start first by identifying here some elements inside the container that identify both the header cell and the data cell itself. Let's start by identifying the header of this column. So this can be done using this directive here, material header cell definition. This is a structural directive that is going to identify what element inside this container corresponds to the header of this particular column. So it's used to mark an element as having a certain role in the material data table. The second element that we need to identify is the data cell itself. This is also possible via another material structural directive, the mat cell definition directive that we need to annotate with the star syntax, like ng-if, ng-4, etc. And with these two structural directives, we have identified the header cell and the data cell themselves. Now let's implement them. Let's start with the description column instead of the sequential number column. In the case of this column, the text is going to be description. And here at the level of the cell, we want to show the data that corresponds to a given row. Let's now talk a little bit about how do we pass in data to the data table because we haven't done so at this stage. The data is going to come here from the courses service. At this moment, when we initialize our screen, we are going to have here our course. So we have a course identifier and we can use it to call here at the level of the courses service, the find all course lessons method that takes a course ID, calls our REST API, and it's going to get back a list of all the lessons of a given course. In this case, there is no pagination in place. We are going to get all the data. We are going to have the data on the client side, and we're going to add more features on top of it. Right now, to keep things simple, we simply want to load all the lessons of a given course. Let's then start by fetching the data from the backend. We are going to switch back here to our course component and we are going to call this service method. We're going to call this.courses service, find all course lessons. This is going to get us back a list of lessons. We are going to pass in here the identification of the course that we have here at this stage. We have the course ID and we're going to get back 
an observable of less an array, meaning that this observable will emit as values a list of lessons, in this case, the course lessons. In order for this observable to work, we need to subscribe to it as usual. So that's what we're going to do here. We are going to get back as it's emitted only value in case there was no error. We're going to get back an array with lessons. Now that we have the data on the front end, let's see how can we pass this data to the material data table and display it on the screen. 